Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is having a very nice day. And wow, today is a big contrast from the weather that we've had in the last few days. <laughs> That is because today it is 67 degrees outside, yeah, and it's rainy and it's got a lot um, lower humidity, so it's also feeling a little chilly actually, and yeah, we've been in the 90s, the upper 80s with extremely hot, humid, muggy weather, and now we woke up to this. So it is a nice welcome relief, but at the same time, it's um, kind of a drastic change. But anyways, I hope that you'll want to stick around for a little bit. And yeah, I'll talk to all of you in just a little while. Well, today what I've been doing is I have been kind of trying to go out and cut some of my herbs, especially my basil, because it's important to cut those off so that they don't grow tall and thin and they get, if you keep them cut, they will grow more bushy. So that's what I've been doing and I actually have gotten enough to dehydrate and get those all dried out. And I just thought that I'd give you a little reminder of what I use to actually you know, grade them up in order to use them in seasoning, and that is I use an old coffee grinder. This works perfectly. So yeah, that is the key to grinding them up quickly and easily. But anyways, that's what I've been doing. I went out and I got some more um, oregano is what I have in here, and boy, does it smell nice. I love this smell of fresh herbs, of oregano, basil. Oh, I just love it. Rosemary. But anyways, that's just kind of what I've been doing today because it is very gloomy. It is kind of, it's not like storming out anymore, but it is a continual heavy drizzle. So yeah, you get wet when you go outside. And the other thing I had to do that I, yeah, I almost forgot to tell you is because we had these storms come through with a cool front, is some of my tomatoes I had to go out and I had to tie up because, yeah, they were just really, really hanging low. So they hadn't hit the ground, but they were, yeah, just there ready to hit the ground. So I had a lot of tying up to do out there. So that's what I've been doing, and yeah, I'll talk to all of you in just a little while. Hello again, everyone. Well, it is that time of the day where I just need that little pick-me-up of another cup of coffee. Yeah, that's what's been going on. And you gotta kind of forgive me here, my hairs. It's raining out there and I've been going out and in and yeah. So it's just a little wonky right now, but that's okay. I wanted to give you an update on what happened with my phone. Yeah, if you're not on Facebook, and you, well, if you are on Facebook, please, uh, you know, go and like my Patty Rose Life Happens page. But if you're not on Facebook, then you don't realize that what I did on Saturday night is we had gone over to Jonathan and Marika's with baby Ben because he was home for the weekend from um, the Academy for the State Police and had invited us over for dinner. And uh, yeah, I got out of the car, forgot that my phone was on my lap, and whap, there it went down on the cement. And it was crooked, cracked cement. So yeah, shattered my phone's screen. Now I can still use my phone. It seems to be in perfect working order. But yeah, right now I'm looking at myself and I have like little webs coming out all over my face. But um, what I did is um, I found a place in town that repairs phones. And so we went there this morning and yes, they will be able to fix my phone. And my phone happens to be a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. So it has a curved screen. So it 
is a lot of money to replace the screen. But in comparison to the cost of replacing the phone, yeah, it's still cheaper. In fact, it's still like two thirds cheaper to replace the screen. So we went ahead and we ordered that and they have a new, well, I don't know how new it is, but they have what's called a liquid screen and they can put it on. They have to do it, I think. Anyways, they don't charge you to put it on. You just have to pay for the screen. But I, I, I paid to have that done. So um, I still have my phone right now because it takes like about a week for this glass to come in. And so I'll take my phone back and he'll do that then. And he'll put this liquid screen saver on it. And he said that that would have prevented most likely what happened from happening. Go figure, right? Anyways, that's what's been going on. So yes, I'm going to get my phone fixed. Yes, it was money I really hadn't budgeted for, but that's okay because at least I don't have to buy a new phone. So I'm going to drink my coffee because I think through all that noise in the back out, background, you probably realize my coffee's made. And I will talk to you in just a little while. Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 4, there it tells us that love is patient. And patience is a part of love that can often be the most difficult. It can feel more like an act of self-control and often comes across more like a sign of weakness rather than love. In order to understand this, we need to go back and we need to read the previous verses from verse 9 in 2 Peter 3 because scripture teaches us a different view of patience. And it says, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. See, God's desire is for restored relationship with all of his children, which leads him to patience toward mankind. And it is his desire to see us grow in holiness and godliness as he waits to bring about the restoration of all things to him in the coming of the new heavens and the new earth. It's our Heavenly Father's desire to create in us a heart like his own who has so patiently loved us. I sense though that many Christians are living just day to day, trying to get by until Jesus returns. And their struggle in the purpose for which Jesus came. You see, God's desire is to use us, to bring about a saving knowledge to all those around us. His plan, his purpose is for the restoration of relationship not just for us to bide our time and push through the drudgery of everyday life. So let's look at the, what the rest of 2 Peter chapter 3 has to say. And we're going to continue with verse 10. 
But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought, ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Continuing in verse 14, Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, waiting for what? all these things that I just read. We are to be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Verse 15, and count the patience of our Lord as salvation. You see, because God loves us, he does not desire us to remain as we are. His plan is to do such a work in us that we live on this earth as Jesus did. Yet so often we feel like we're just spinning our wheels, so to speak, as we journey toward Christ's likeness. However, scripture teaches us that it is God in his patience who produces holiness in godliness. In our own strength, we have no ability to change. Our only job is to engage with and allow him to work in and through us. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, another version reads this verse like this. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. God's desire isn't for us to engage in works that have the appearance of morality, but aren't flowing from the true desire of our hearts. His longing is to mold and shape our hearts by his love into a heart that reflects his own so we might live true lives of holiness out of the overflow of what he has done and is doing in us. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. Only God can accomplish such a work. Only God can fill us with the ability to truly love. And as today's verse in 2 Peter 3, 9 tells us, he is patient to do so. And he is patiently working in us to accomplish this work. God bless, and I will talk to you in just a few days.